I, on behalf of CII and on my personal behalf, would like to welcome you all to this conference on AI in agriculture. May I request all of you to please settle down so that we can start the conference in next couple of minutes. The speakers are already here. May I request everyone to please settle down, take your seats so that we can start the conference. Thank you. एक वन हेलो चेक वन हेलो चेक चेक वन चेक वन हेलो by a plethora of questions. Is there a one-stop solution for my business queries? How can I meet the who's who of the business industry? Is there a platform where I can showcase my products and services to the world? Is it possible to access all the global tender information and business leads at one place? Who can give my business the financial support it requires? Here is the solution you have been searching for. CII presents MyCII.in an online business resource center and a unique interactive business platform which has got a large base of subscribers mycii.in gives you a platform to multiply update seek and enrich your knowledge so that your business goes places multiply your business prospects with access to over 5000 global live tenders on display every day get multiple opportunities upcoming business initiatives and business leads MyCII's Finance Facilitation Center backs up many businesses with financial support. Finance Facilitation Center is one-stop resource point for attending to the needs of the SMEs by bridging the gap between banks and SMEs, sharing information about SMEs schemes and providing online training programs on numerous economy and business prospects. Online B2B Zone offers Excel growth prospects and lets industries derive value by accessing info about online B2B meetings, partners, trends in the market, and verified tested industry catalogs. MyCII.in keeps the industries updated with up-to-date accurate information about government notifications issued by state and the center, 
policies and investment trackers, schemes for SMEs and economy updates. What's more, you can also seek advice and guidance from experts on business structure, market intelligence, competitive scenario, legal aspects, and industry-specific inputs. Also, with online communities section, you get the opportunity to be a part of various experts, functional and sectoral communities, which facilitate active discussions, expert guidance, and peer-to-peer -peer interaction. MyCII.in also enriches your business knowledge and offers various special services for the MNCs and SMEs. You can access more than 20,000 knowledge resources, valuable webinar recordings, more than 1,000 publications, and sectoral vision documents to intensify your knowledge. Apart from all these, MyCII's e-events library lets the members access missed conferences and events digitally, take advantage of business networking, and meeting relevant people across the industry. And that's not all. Over 16,000 minutes of online masterclasses concluded by experts on world-class manufacturing, compliances, export and import, and many others, enable industries to acquire the leading guidance and precision. With My Account section, business users can not only customize their company profile, but their preferences in terms of industry, country, state, frequency of the updates and alerts as well. Not only this, MyCII.in delivers personalized and customized alerts in your inbox, which makes it easy for the members to update themselves. Quite rightly. to have come by this morning, uh, knowing that it's a Sunday, uh, so it becomes even more significant, uh, and I can see a full house, so, uh, and that's a good time to start today. My name is uh, Prateek Garg, and uh, I'm the chair for CII's Regional Committee on Digital Transformation and AI. So my background really is about tech, IT, and that's the, so I know nothing about agro. So we now here trying to bring the two together and over the years uh, tech has begun to play a very very important role on how 
uh, agriculture is progressing and efficacy is improving. So, so let me also welcome my esteemed panelist on, uh, on the dais, uh, Mr. Vinod Sood, my colleague from CII, is the co-chair for the regional committee, Northern Region on Digital Transformation AI, and he's also the managing director of another tech company called Huge Sixistic Corporation. Uh, Mr. Char Taranjit Singh Bamra, Chief Executive Agnext, uh, Mr. Pushpender Singh, Associate Dean R&D and Project Director for Abad, Indian Institute of Technology, Roper, uh, Mr. Vishal Bechter, Professor uh, and Associate Director, Punjab Agriculture University, uh, Mr. Suvanand Guthate, GM Agri University, Estiri Aerospace Limited, and if I may, uh, I may pronounce your name incorrectly, so Mr. Wong, uh, Worldwide Innovator in Horticulture in GM Asia for Hodengom, Netherlands. So, so there is international representation, uh, and as we know, you know, Netherlands is uh, number one country in, in terms of produce per hectare of land. So they are the largest exporter in the world. Ms. Ch Chandana Tekate, Science and Technology, Good Food Institute, India. So th thank you all. Uh, so on behalf of uh, CII and my personal behalf, I extend a very warm welcome to all of you. Uh, we really appreciate your taking time out from your schedules. Uh, agriculture is one of the key sectors that now requires substantive change and uh, transformation to accelerate the response to key barriers that impede sustainable growth. The rapid ev evolution of AI technology, uh, which is really the topic of today's conference, uh, offers a new tool for making agricultural practices more efficient, equitable, uh, uh, and less damaging to the environment at a time when progress is critical to achieve the targets set by the global community. Uh, you know, we all know we, uh, you know, the population on the planet is only going north. Uh, we are not roughly now 8 billion people on the planet. And therefore, our ability to produce more with this, and the land is not increasing, land is finite. So obviously we got to do more to get more out of uh, agri, so that there is food for every human being. Analysts estimate AI in agriculture market reached about $1 billion in the COVID and is expected to grow exponentially from here. There is a observable increase in investments in AI startups across all sectors. And so AI, uh, is now all pervasive. AI as a technology is not new. You know, it's about three decade old technology. It's just that in the last one decade, uh, last decade, it, we have seen uh, adoption and a lot of innovation and research that is happening. And this is not only about agri, it's about all industries. Uh, and you're seeing uh, start a lot of startup investments coming in this direction. This is largely driven by the strong ROI, strong uh, investor interest received on AI capital allocations. So if you, you, know, if you pick up uh, newspapers every day and there is a news about investment in startup, you would see that the underlying theme is about AI. Due to it, and AI is, has, is therefore very strategic uh, to the overall uh, innovation that today is happening and investment for AI in agriculture today in amounts for uh, a very small share and that is really where uh, the opportunity lies. And there are a bunch of companies doing phenomenal work right from weather prediction to soil to you know in, in using AI technology. As for any digital solution AI deployment depends on the availability and functionality of an IT or ICT infrastructure in the target areas and communities. But what really changed over the last decade uh, in terms of the building blocks of technology, the cloud uh, and the mobile technologies uh, have now democratized adoption of technology and the cloud uh, gone further in making 
AI models available, ready models that are available. And so it, it is like plug and play. So if you have an idea, uh, you can test the idea very quickly uh, using any of these clouds, you know, whether it's a uh, Amazon cloud or a Microsoft cloud, Azure or, or Google cloud. Uh, all these three hyperscalers are offering tremendous amount of uh, out-of-the-box AI solutions. And they've, they've kind of gone to the first, next level where they're making them um, industry-specific solutions. And mobile, uh, on the other side, uh, the smartphone uh, and, and the data, uh, the cost of all this has come down dramatically over the last five, six years, making it uh, affordable for everybody. You know, I hardly see anybody using the old phones you know, today. And, and further, the, the payment infrastructure that has got created in this country is phenomenal. Uh, and, you know, but for that, uh, the two years of COVID uh, would have become you know, very difficult for a common man to really operate. Whether a farmer uses an AI-powered app on their smartphone or a system interconnected devices, that connect, collects and analyzes real-time data for, for crop monitoring, connectivity is essential. So network has also become all pervasive. And as all of you would perhaps have, be aware that 5G has been announced and we are one of the leading countries and the 5G cost structure that cost at which it is available now is a game changer. And as we go into time, you would see the cost coming down further. So all in all, you know, I think, uh, uh, you know, all the forces are now coming together to propel the industry forward. So engaging local stakeholders and developing partnerships is another critical requirement from providing resources to promoting community engagement. Local stakeholders can offer invaluable support to the implementers. Therefore, it is recommended to engage them on early on in the process to receive their feedback and to look for synergies. And this is a platform, Agrotech is a platform uh, which really offers all stakeholders at, at one place and therefore uh, that ability to exchange ideas uh, and uh, see where we can collaborate with each other. In addition to above, developers and implementers should take into account the potential negative consequences also for wide scale AI adoption amongst target communities. The impact of AI on local employment should be considered with priority for financially accessible AI solutions uh, that complement rather than replace uh, the work of human farmers. Well, you know, in, in terms of, uh, I mean, this is a word of caution here, but uh, in practicality, one is not seeing AI really impacting employment. And especially in the agro sector, if at all, it will only help augment employment. Because if you're producing more, you'll employ, employ more people. And whatever has to be man and machine in this new age, in, you know, is, have to learn to work together. And that, I think, uh, is, is going to be a, f a fundamental skill that the next generation will need. That their ability to work with a machine uh, has to be uh, at a different level. Technology has refined farming over the years and technological advances have affected the agriculture industry in more than one way. Agriculture is the mainstay occupation in many countries worldwide and with rising population, which, uh, which I just <laughs> mentioned earlier, uh, this becomes even more imperative. And there are so many countries uh, who, who have no food production, okay? And from an India point of view, this is a great opportunity. And we are beginning to see uh, that food exports from our country uh, have skyrocketed in the last two, three years. And the data that the government has been releasing of late, uh, this is very, very encouraging uh, and incredible uh, amount of work that our farmers are doing and the government helping them uh, to access markets abroad, which also means that the quality of produce is also uh, getting a lot better. One keeps seeing a lot of pictures of uh, Indian produce in, in, the, in the Dubai malls, uh, you know, in UAE. They buy absolutely A-class, A A-grade food, 
in dubai you can't go and sell anything so so however uh, you know traditional methods are not enough to handle this huge demand this is driving farmers and agro companies to find newer ways to increase production and reduce waste as a result ai is steadily emerging as part of the agriculture industry technology evolution ai systems are helping improve the harvest quality and accuracy which is known as precision agriculture and this is where we are headed now ai technology is assisting in detecting the disease in plants pests poor, poor plant nutrition etc it also allows the farmers to monitor the health of the crops and the soil and i would like to say that uh, ai can also be used <coughs> to help farmers in crop diversification so that you know that the yield per hectare uh, can change dramatically and their income levels can continue to rise with the implementation of agriculture ai farmers can analyze weather conditions temperature water soil conditions collected from their farm to make informed decisions on the business choices of the crops choices etc big data analysis also determines optimized irrigation helps reduce greenhouse gas emissions and pinpoints the exact soil light food and water requirements necessary for propagation so the potential essentially is <clears throat> that digital agriculture has the potential to make it more productive more consistent and use time and resources more uh, efficiently as well as uh, in disaster management you know if weather conditions get disastrous and there are early signals farmer can do enough to you know save the crops this brings critical advantage to farmers and wider social benefits across the world to the entire humanity it also enables the organizations to share information across traditional industry boundaries to open up new and disruptive op opportunities and you know today why we are talking ai is that on a at a very foundational level the data collection uh, over these years has given us the power of analyzing that data and then apply ai models on top of it you know 10 years ago we wouldn't be talking because ai is is the is the refinery which refines the data uh, which, which is really the oil in this case so so that is really why today ai is becoming more and more pervasive and 10 years hence uh, you know ai will be the way of life you know we won't even uh, even think about it you know because it will be existent everywhere uh, in the way we work digital agriculture also has some barriers and 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 uh, you know uh, you know in in terms of costs are high the details of the long term benefits are rarely available and this means th that to secure its widespread adoption it is required to have more and more collaboration consensus across the value chain and communication very strong platforms to exchange communication agrotech fortunately is is something in that direction and i i'm sure over the years you know this is a bi yearly event uh, so you know we uh, we should leverage these such events fully and bring all stakeholders together with these words i'd like to request our session moderator mr taranjit singh bamra founder and chief executive officer uh, agnext technologies to now take this session forward thank you uh, all of you once again and uh, please enjoy the rest of the conference uh, and it is a pleasure being here thank you um, thank you very much pratik ji good morning everyone my name is taran i am the ceo and founder of agnex technologies which is a company focusing heavily on application of ai in agriculture of all the words and all the statements and all the write ups that you would have read about ai ai promises to be a magic wand you know at one section there is a research uh, fraternity which will say that ai will solve the moon 
and on one side there will be the media which will go on finding that route to the moon i think it is not like that ai is something where i am very happy to say that today we have panelists who have applied ai which is primarily using ai to solve some problem in our agriculture space and i would i would like to mention this again because i i keep reading a lot of these statements about you know that ai is being used for this aspect for that that aspect and as mr pratik rightly said that that has happened because of one reason because we have been able to now source data in agriculture 6 to 7 or 10 years back this was very very difficult that data used to lie in silos that data used to lie in very very text formats which we were not able to ascertain or use it for any other processing i'll give you an example i was uh, just last week i was with one of india's largest millers i was sitting with him and his son and uh, he wanted to take a you know a buy of around 50000 tons so he gave a gave a call to 7 8 mandis uh, bhai mandi hai teji hai batao zara with seven phone calls he then he then took the call that he told his son that okay let's buy this much from here and this much from here so what exactly as humans we are doing here we are taking data and we are processing that information and that is what as humans we are best at and that is what whether it is agriculture a farmers in agriculture or prof professors in universities or our industrialists they all have been using this data to process and provide the best input or the best insight to the to the application in agriculture now that is possible at 1000 the speed at 1000 the time this is what ai will bring what was being done using extremely human uh, i would say uh, applications of processing that is now done at 1000 the time at you know 1000 the speed so this is which which makes it ai let's say a million times more better than you know how uh, we were doing agriculture but with this comes a huge responsibility how do we how do we bring in this data how do we process this data and where do we apply it and i think that's why i am very happy to have very eminent uh, panelist amongst us who are actually applying uh, this this technology uh, at their own expertise so i am very glad to uh, you know welcome everyone here today and our eminent panelists to talk about how are they using this new technology of ai for their for their applications we just need to be you know cognizant of the of the fact that we had a green revolution india led the green revolution to you know become self sufficient in food then came the white revolution we became self sufficient in milk then came the yellow revolution we became self sufficient in pulses and oil seeds the next revolution is blue revolution which is basically apply of data apply of ai into pure agriculture and make ourselves not only self sufficient but as a as a food bowl of the world and that time is not far where we will in in this decade itself you will see that india which has which has the most amount of technologies being offered on a platter whether it is upi whether it is you know sensors all of that has been done so nicely uh, uh, over the last 5 years because of you know lot of interventions by the government lot of innovations by the startups all of that will now be available on a platter for agriculture to use and take it forward the next leap uh, which will be the blue revolution so i think uh it's a great uh, day for us to start the discussion and uh, i would uh, request uh, my panelists from the from the left mr we are wont to actually talk about give us brief introduction and then we will proceed with the 
uh, with the session. Just a two minute uh, introduction to yourself, please. Thank you very much. Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Wiert Funk. I'm representing uh, automation company Hogendorn of the Netherlands. Uh, for 60 years, uh, we help growers uh, all over the world to increase their yield in polyhouses, greenhouses, uh, vertical farms. Uh, we do that, we help growers to increase their yield based on data, on sensor data. Previous speaker just mentioned it. What we see uh, as a challenge, and everybody sees that nowadays, that world population is rising. By 2050, we will have 10 billion people living on this earth. And if we continue like this, growing in open field, growing um, with not sustainable methods, we will see that we will need three times the planet Earth to feed our population. And that also can be very, is very visible in, in India, uh, where arable and fertile land is decreasing. Apart from that, there's the human factor. A lot of people are moving from the countryside towards the cities. So that farmers actually that need to produce, their will, the, the number of them will decrease. In other words, we need to produce more production to feed our population here in India as well with less resources. Yep. Less resources in terms of water, in terms of fertilizers to grow our crops. And for that, the only way to do that in our eyes is to do that in a sustainable method, which is in a protected way. Um, and AI is a method of using uh, to increase the grower's yields. Yeah. So what we actually help growers with is that they, with sensors, they collect their data and by a process computer, the computer pre precisely irrigates the right amount of water and fertilizers to the plant based on what the plant is needing, not more, not less. And I think the message of today is that we can have a lot, a lot of uh, technology introducing to farmers, but still it is, there is the human factor is still playing a big role. Eh? You cannot work in greenhouses or you cannot produce vegetables without human beings. So what we see is that growers will, from a very traditional um, role of yeah, walking in the field, walking in their greenhouse, taking care of plants will become more or less, uh, there's a shifting role towards tech managers. Eh? They will control their environment, they're controlling their productivity based on data. And um, yeah, I think also that is for India, a new method, a new way of adapting technology. We, we can adapt a lot of technology, but we should help people, help the growers with knowledge of how to implement this technology. That is vital. Technology transfer is vital to increase production in the end. And that can only be done from human being to human being. So as a company, it is our mission also to play a big part in this knowledge transfer towards investors, towards growers that want to help this country with increasing the yield, their yield. So that is uh, my message. Thank you so much. Yeah. It's a great application. Uh, I mean, time immemorial, we have been using plant sciences, plant breeding in order to, you know, collect data and, and improve the yields, uh, but using over 60 years collecting this data and improving the entire plant uh, uh, yield is, is, is an amazing, amazing use case. Uh, now I would require uh, request uh, Professor Vishal Victor uh, to you know talk about uh, his his thoughts on how AI 
will be transforming agriculture and what are the various applications that he is leading? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Taran and uh, Mr. Pratik, for uh, setting this uh, because a theme of discussion today, and that is uh, AI. Uh, myself, Dr. Vishal Bakter from Punjab Agriculture University, Ludhiana. Uh, basically, I am a faculty of uh, farm machinery and power engineering, uh, but looking after uh, university as uh, associate director, industrial linkages. Uh, I am with the university for last 22 years, and uh, prior to that, I was working with the New Holland tractors. So my viewpoint on this uh, theme is uh, like AI is a buzzword these days and we lot talk lo a lot about this AI and data science. The message which I would like to convey is for us, uh, data is a currency, data is a food, data is a medicine and data is a matter of joy to play with and uh, have entertainment also. A lot is being talked about uh, like uh, generating information. And who is going to restore that and store that information? Where is the bank? Who is the validation industry? Who is the validation institution? So I will touch upon this point because we have very vast experienced panelists. They will be presenting their viewpoints on different ideas. So now there is a time that we should have pool of information and there, is, should, there should be some agency, some organization, some association should be formed that who is going to validate and uh, we can say develop the algorithms for reference points. Otherwise, what will happen after five years? So if I am to pick any image analysis from any reference point for the pathology point of view, crop disease point of view, for the same disease, for the same point, I am coming up and I am getting five, six references to whom I should refer as a validator. So we need to develop sort of a data bank, data bank in the sense, uh, if I am giving good information into that bank, I should be released some currency. So that I can exchange information from my bank as a validated information. That is, that is the way that I will generate good information to earn currency, which I can cash later on for my own uh, purpose. Otherwise, too much information leads to confusion. This is what is happening. Uh, so too much opportunities spoil your decision. We are talking about building decision support system. So for that, my, uh, I, I am thinking as an institution, we have very good organizations, associations, which were established 40 years back, 50 years back. And they are the base for any scientific information to be validated and come into a good journals as a reference points. So one thing is that we need to develop sort of a world data bank. Then only we can think of uh, this uh, big data management. Fortunately, agriculture sciences, agriculture food production system itself is a, a domain of uh, multiple disciplinary uh, actions. I cannot generate crop if I am a breeder only. I cannot generate crop as a pathologist. I cannot generate crop as a machine person. No. Agriculture production itself is, we can say, a domain of um, big data management and now with the help of this computing technologies and all those uh, we can say tools we are having uh, I think uh, this is the uh, crux in the sense we need to develop some uh, we can say association or a body which can restore and which can provide the validated information so this is one point I would like to convey and uh, another is uh, sharing the information Information is going to be a, like we can say, uh, we can say very well protected information. Sharing is caring. So if there is no policy, I will keep on protecting my information. Ki this is my data, this is IP policy, this is IPR policy, this is our company policy, we cannot share. Why so? If information is to be hidden, then that is not information. From information, we need to develop knowledge and from knowledge, it is to be wisdom. So if information is well, uh, so-called well protected, I think that information is of no use. But information come as a knowledge base, it, there should be a policy, there should be a global policy, and uh, that global policy, somebody is to take a lead. 
otherwise it will remain restricted and whatever the restricted information is, that is not an information. And the, uh, our colleague mentioned the platform for sharing this information, this is the platform. Bank is the platform where we have exchange of currency. So information is the currency and uh, I think uh, good beginning has already been made and we have reached AI, we have used AI as far as consumer is concerned. But now there is a need to uh, explore the strength of AI, the hidden ocean we can say, the iceberg we are having, it's the real sense of AI, AI as a producer, as a processor we need to develop this chain. So with these words, uh, I keep this house open for discussion because uh, initially three, four, five minutes from the speaker is the point where we want to have discussion from our, uh, we can say not the panelist, all the participants. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Indeed, uh, a central pool of information which develops and validates uh, is a very, very critical need. Uh, as we move into the blue revolution, uh, a lot of research is already happening in multiple universities, which is not pooled together. And I think this is what uh, Professor Vishal is is hinting upon, that you know there should be a central central repository which should be used for building various AI applications in agriculture. Having said said that, I think uh, I would like to. Uh, I would like to inform uh, all the audience here that uh, the government of India is working on a full agriculture stack. And this is an, an, uh, the way uh, we created a pool for, I mean, created a uniform technology of UPI, ULI. Uh, the agriculture stack is almost there to be rolled out by, by March of next year. And this will, this is uh, a work of uh, months and months uh, of work by multiple scientists, uh, multiple, uh, I would say, information technologists who have worked to create uh, the stack. And uh, I believe the moment it is released, uh, it will be a huge benefic uh, beneficial to all the startups and researchers to use that data to you know, build their AI applications on top of it. So I think the need as highlighted is is very, very important need. And uh, a, a lot of work is, is already on way to be delivered to a nation towards that. Now I would like to uh, request uh, Mr. Pushpinder to talk about, talk about how uh, he represents uh, IIT Roper and uh, has been working at the cutting edge of uh, applications of AI, not just in agriculture, but in multiple healthcare and other other spheres. So Mr. Pushpinder, how do you see, uh, you know, so much of innovation, how can we translate uh, to agriculture uh, at, the, at the fastest possible means? Uh, thank you, Taran. And uh, thanks CII and other organizers to um, have me here. I come from IIT Roper, as uh, Taran stated. I'm Pushpendra. Uh, I teach instrumentation, and therefore I teach also cyber physical systems and AI. Um, why I said this? Um, I said this because uh, what we do at IIT Roper is slightly different than what is needed for agriculture. Uh, I also would like to mention uh, here that we at IIT Roper are leading a national mission initiative that is called Technology Innovation for Agriculture and Water. IIT Roper is the only institute in the country after IIT Kharagpur uh, to work very extensively on agriculture and this we decided to do because we come from Punjab and we are in Punjab. So um, uh, this is one initiative that we are uh, putting a lot of efforts in. But before um, I move on to the next part and I talk about something I want to share with you that any technology that we talk about, it uh, can be for uh, two kind of uh, consumers. Uh, it can be industry, uh, which is ready to adopt the technology and other 
in this particular case is the farmers. Uh, what we are doing at IIT Roper is we are primarily concentrating what we can give to the farmers as technology and in this case AI. Uh, AI can be used as my fellow um, panelist mentioned, it can be used in many ways but I also would like to say with you that this is a very powerful tool and very powerful tool in the sense that it can solve definitely a lot of issues, but for agriculture, we do not need that kind of power. Uh, I personally feel that in agriculture, we need uh, deployment of AI for farmer consumer uh, midstream technologies. So how we can connect consumer and farmer in much better way. Animal health is one of the aspect where AI can help a lot uh, crop health and protection, in the introduction also it was said, so this is an area where AI can help produce consumer requirement optimization. This is what uh, we have been working extensively. Uh, the other thing is the information flow and the biodiversity. Biodiversity is uh, one of the area where we need to think uh, now. When Green Revolution came in India in 1965, in just seven or five years of time, Punjab alone started producing more than 70% of grain that entire India was producing. And this was one of the, you know, a start point where everybody started aspiring what Punjab has achieved in just five years of time of beginning of Green Revolution. But everything comes with a price tag. And one problem that we have created in our fields is the kind of biodiversity my grandfather or my father used to see in the fields, I don't see. And a lot of this biodiversity is not always harmful. There are insects which are very useful for agriculture. There are insects which are not useful and we cannot spray, for example, pesticides or insecticides which can kill everything. So there can be technologies which can help or advise farmers on the time, duration, month, or maybe uh, you know from morning to evening, one, this kind of insects are getting multiplied, which are useful for agriculture, and release an advisory. So there can be a lot of um, applications of AI. Of course, uh, we can discuss more um, what application and what are the things that uh, I'm, I'm trying to convey. But one thing that uh, Wonk has initially touched upon was the population. So agriculture today is, or why technology institutions or, or the engineers globally, they should talk about agriculture because this is an existential problem. This is not a problem related to my mobile phone or the computer. It's a related problem to the life. So if the population is going to be 10 billion by 2050, we need 70% more food to be produced. And the, the population, if we look at India's scenario, uh, India's uh, population will be shifting to urban settings by just 2040. So in 2040, rural population will be less and urban population will be more. Now the question here is, are we losing something by this transformation? We are of course losing arable land. Then we have to come up with the practices and the methods which can help to grow more, uh, to, to feed more people. And not to mention that we are going to be the biggest country on this planet in terms of population. So we need, uh, I'm not trying to scare, but more so the produce that we do today, 30 or 40% of it is wasted. And this food waste that we are doing, it is not only related to the food, it's also related to 25% of the fresh water. We know that agriculture uses 75% of the fresh water that we have ever estimated on the planet. So the question here is more related to existence. It's not related to technology or business. It's related to that this humankind is not going to exist. And if it is going to exist, it is going to exist in a very complicated situation. So all of us should work. And the only way we can, um, we can correct it uh, is the technology. And in technology, AI is one of the component which can help us to deal with 
autonomous you know behavior or autonomous uh, operations reliable operations and efficient operations so with this i uh, i think i will hand over to taran thank you for sure uh, thank you thank you pushpinder ji i think for sure uh, we have a we have a need of existence uh, through agriculture and uh, applying technology uh, is the foremost requirement that agriculture needs today uh, thankfully we have uh, we have been a leader in technology and that's how we have been able to bring in whether green or blue or white or you know yellow revolutions but today the need is more about processing faster today it's the need is more about bringing more i would say sensor based technologies in order to offset the use that is being you know dependent on humans and and bringing a bit more aspect of uh, ai into into agriculture uh, i'm pretty sure that at iit roper there are a lot of other use cases that are being pursued so i think i'll come back to you uh, with a with a question on you know can you can you provide some insights into uh, how ai is being used in other sector and and what are the various applications you see in agriculture in the uh, in the near future for example you mentioned about livestock livestock is a very very animal husbandry is a very very important uh, application for ai uh, in fact there are there are use cases in agriculture where today uh, using ai you are able to predict the exact exact time of you know uh, when to when to uh, do a artificial insemination in a in a in a livestock there are there are calculations which exactly tell when when we need to do a particular process in in a livestock uh, whether it is poultry or whether it is a cow or whether all of this has been possible because of sensors and and the application of ai which which removes the human intelligence and and brings an artificial intelligence to analyze and predict that what is the application that you need to do at that point of time so i i would suggest you to please uh, prepare that uh, we will will come back to you shortly uh now i would like to uh, discuss with uh, ms vanna uh sorry uh, channa my apologies here uh ms channa uh, comes from a very strong background uh, from one of the i would say very foremost institutes working in food uh, sciences uh, the good food institute and uh, she has been a researcher uh, along with a lot of scientists who have been working on bringing new age uh, i would say protein uh, for our, for the for for human consumption uh, i would like uh, ms channa to introduce and talk about what is the work she is doing and uh, how are they leveraging artificial intelligence to build the next set of food uh, for indian platter yeah. thank you mr bamra uh, um i um yeah i'm part of the good food institute india um part of a global network of non-profit organizations helping build the um, smart protein sector or alternative protein sector as it's called globally um we are um endeavoring to address the same challenges we were discussing about here um trying to um address food insecurity climate change and public health crises um by and um uh, trying to provide provide alternatives to meat dairy and eggs hopefully plant based alternatives and um this area has is still in its nascent stage in india the smart protein sector um but there has been particularly heightened interest and awareness in this area and uh, it presents a great solution to um the the population rise challenge especially um the 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 sustainable solution of, of plant ba based proteins um can can be classified um into more verticals like plant based foods um cultivated meat sector cellular agriculture is another big one and fermentation derived proteins um to give you um the ai linkage of of how smart proteins and ai can go hand in hand um i would like to talk about how our ability to embed ai into every sector has just gone up exponentially and um, climate smart agriculture is is a great example 
So a, a, a brief overview of, of how intersecting AI abilities into smart protein sector, we, we can't ignore our indigenous agricultural biodiversity. Uh, for example, there's a need to improve all protein products across the value chain, right from crop optimization to texturization, bioprocessing, and production. Um, and if you look at plant-based proteins um, manufactured across the world, the only commodity crop that's focused on is corn, soy, and wheat. Out of the 392,000 plant species out there, um, why don't we broaden our toolkit of plant species? Um, so uh, using a food science approach, data analysis, computation, uh, we could improve agricultural production capabilities using crops of indigenous origin. Millets, hemp, pulses, lentils, these are great examples. Um, so India is aptly poised to contribute to this endeavor thanks to our agricultural biodiversity. So to, to do this, however, we need data, analytical data on how best to utilize these crops optimize on the basis of scientific parameters. For example, extrusion is, is a very popular technique to extract proteins uh, from, from our crops. Um, so how do we look at analytical parameters like protein dispensability index, um, dis dispensability, sorry, uh, gelling, emulsifications, stabilization. So these are all parameters that need computational data. And all of these protein characteristics need to be analyzed from the crop level to understand how our end product formulation turns out. Um, so that application of AI to cycle through the many food crops and species um, is, is vital to select for the best combination of crop yield, functionality, cost, and nutritional standpoint. So this is how smart protein sector and AI would go hand in hand. And this is game changing if you stop and think about it, uh, because we can immensely increase the efficiency and means of handling uh, massive data sets. Um, so uh, yeah, th that's just one example of, of how we can integrate and interlink the two, um, the two fields. Um, and there's, there's a good chance that these tools are already out there. And um, all we need to do is look at these hard scientific problems uh, poised at us and apl application of these AI tools to, to solve them. And this will only help us scale up faster, move faster, and, and be able to um, um, provide a transformative agricultural solution to, um, to protein security. Um, and yeah, uh, so I, I invite people of, of the industry to, um, who are already developing this, these tools to um, help work with us in, in these um, endeavors to, to provide better plant-based protein solutions to our growing population. So thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Chandanath, for you know, highlighting the use of AI in solving one yet another problem, uh, I mean food, and and using not just the sciences but the but the information, the data that is collected to build better plant proteins uh, for our human consumption. So thank you so much. I think there's there's a huge uh, application uh, for all the youngsters and all the researchers who are planning to move into food processing. Uh, the application of AI for uh, the sector like plant protein has a massive potential. Uh, most of uh, the investments today happening in this space are 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 scaling very fast. And uh, India is a bit, although uh, six years back, I was one of the first person who said, why don't we have, uh, you know, this, this will be the largest market, India will be the largest market where uh, vegetable plant protein can replace because there are so many vegetarians yet they would like to eat a kind of a meat texture. But uh, what we have seen is the larger markets have come up to be Singapore, uh, you know, Asia, etc., where uh, all the people who had been eating uh, non-vegetarian want to move into a vegetarian alternative. So I think India is just at the cusp and this kind of applications will find an amazing 
amazing sector to apply uh, AI. So thank you so much, uh, uh, Ms. Chandna. Uh, now, very interesting, I would like to invite uh, Mr. Swanan Gurate, uh, who comes from, you know, one of the sectors where uh, the most application of AI has been, has been uh, on the on the ground or on the air <laughs> yes so you know he he represents asteria aerospace and from the name you would you would understand drones and then drone comes ai in agriculture <laughs> uh, i think i would request him to talk about how uh, uh, aerospace solutions asteria aerospace uh, kind of uh, companies are using using imagery uh, in order to you know process information and provide insights to 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 farmers so i think uh, mrs swanan used to talk, tell us about you know how how exciting this sector is thank you taran and good morning to all panel members and to all participants now so let me introduce first myself i am swanan gudate and i am a farmer's son and I am an agriculture graduate by choice and an agri-tech professional by choice. So I'm working in this profession since almost last 14 years. And as Saran said, uh, ki, when we say drone, uh, like even people working in drone companies start flying because there is so much hype around the world uh, word drone. And uh, when it actually, uh, there was a peak of hype, I think some five years back. So everyone used to say that in like we can solve all problems of agriculture using a drone right from sowing until harvesting and everything can be done. You put some cameras and it will be done. But thankfully dust is getting settled now and there is a clear view what can be done and what cannot be done. And uh, that's a good for industry uh, actually and that's good for a farmer as well uh, to the all stakeholders also. Uh, uh, it's a natural part to have a, a lot of curiosity and hype about new technologies that comes to uh, into a market and it's uh, presumed to have a lot of uh, potential uh, to, uh, you can say, to change the course of actions, how, how things are done uh, in a normal course. Uh, but uh, nevertheless, uh, even though that is the situation, drone is a still a very a potential, uh, uh, I can say, a technology which has an ability to change uh, the multiple things into an agriculture. Uh, but it has to be dealt in a particular way. Uh, uh, as in, it, there needs to be have a, a some method to the madness we are considering that we need to solve the, all the problems or this. And for that, uh, we at Asteria, uh, we have uh, taken some core principle that our first objective to build the solution is uh, to enable the informed and action-oriented solutions for a farmer and drone could be just one of the tool to enable that thing. So uh, it is very important to have uh, uh, your approach as a solution focused uh, rather than just focusing on the technology which you have and start solving the problems. And I think in many situations, uh, uh, when we start new into something, uh, we are so obsessed with a particular technology uh, that we stop uh, looking uh, a problem in totality or from a largest perspective and then we end up just depending on one or very uh, a limited scope of work that can be solved. So what? So we, uh, we have developed some, I can say, a very crop specific, use case specific solutions which are AI enabled. Uh, in particular crops and now we have started offering those to a particular customers and uh, we are getting really good results for that and now we are also building so we are trying to scale up or make those uh, solutions available to the farmers so we first believe in the 3A philosophies so first is make it available then second make it accessible and third is uh, make it affordable so we are working on availability uh, I think accessibility is not a much challenge considering kind of an uh, infrastructure uh, uh, revolution we have in terms of cloud and mobile etc. But slowly we are also working on making it affordable so that it reaches to the uh, remotest farmer in the country. So what is a particular approach we follow? So uh, though it is said that we can solve all the problems or n number of uh, problems uh, using uh, AI uh, and that's enabled through say in my context 
it's uh, you can say enabled by the aerial data uh, which is generated through a drone and to some extent uh, using satellite as well but it is really important to identify the core problem uh, that needs to be solved which can add either an economic value to the output which is getting generated or uh, it it should uh, reduce or substitute the uh, present operations which are done by the either farmer or anyone else so you can create a uh, value by either reducing the cost or you can create the value either by increasing the output quantity or a quality so that is why you need to have a very focused approach in identifying the problem what you need to solve so i will just give a very small example i am from maharashtra i am from pune so our belt is known for sugarcane cultivation i think you might have heard about it and uh, as a child uh, uh, when i was a child i used to roam around village and there is a one irrigation method called i think i am in punjab also that might be some relevant here in that context also so there was one irrigation how you will irrigate the field so my uncle used to say i will go in the night i will start the motor and whenever i awake in the early morning i will just go to the my field i will just pick up one stone and will throw in if the sounds like dubuk comes means water has reached to the last level and then i will stop the meter so there is no scientific way of stopping that but but if as an technologist i decide to solve that problem okay i will generate some kind of analytic solution which will trigger the motor it will stop automatically and then farmer need not to go it see that looks scientifically okay technologically solvable and it's like a great thing we are talking about sustainability and everything but the real question is will farmer is farmer ready to pay me for that because for farmer in indian context water is free and electricity is free because then he is not bothered to pay me for that and if i am as an industry or i am as an entrepreneur trying to build such a solutions which are not remunerative enough or i am not generating any kind of income from that then this is a very uh, discouraging for me to build such a solutions so when this is a very simple problem statement i am giving there are multiple problems in each agriculture value chain right from say uh, sowing till the harvesting but it's very important to pick a problem which has some economic value generation potential and then work on that so some other thing is uh, when we are talking about ai in the particular today's discussions context is ai is we have to just remember that ai is just a tool and it's a just a tool to enable a farming and it's not a farming and when we say it's a tool what matters the end results matter not the process that's why when we say we are generating any kind of information analytics that analytics needs to be transfer, uh, transferred into or you can say it should be converted into the actionable uh, uh, intelligence or solution action oriented task which we can ask to the farmers to do just a simple example now we say uh, using data we can tell you there are some stressed areas in your crop ye corner acha nahi hai ye bura hai ye medium acha hai okay it just like saying to someone ki tumhara bp 150 hai but i don't know whether it's a good or bad or iske sath kya karna hai tumhara ek ka bande ka bp 150 hai ek ka 100 hai i'm just giving a very uh, uh, raw example are ya kisi ka 100 hai but right now lot more people talk about just identification of a problems or we are just trying to say ki hum we have reached to the some some kind of a level of a solution building but if that solution doesn't result into any actions for a farmer then that solution is not ultimately helpful so whenever we are saying Uh, we are building such a solution those needs to be transferred into the action oriented solutions and that is why ai in isolation will not work that needs to be uh, uh, cohesively work with the other hardware solutions and other things which will solve the problems in end to end way and just not building the some solutions in isolation and the last uh, point which i just want to bring is Uh, we as a industry and even i think uh, sir also talked about that we just need to believe in the power of collaboration so uh, being industry being entrepreneur uh, so everyone's natural aspiration is okay i want to have a maximum share of a pie because i am putting my money and i only have the smartest brain in the country that's why i should get a maximum share from the whatever we are earning but but at some point of time we as a industry and everyone has to realize that no one can get everything so there would be a, 
देर वुड बी वैल्यू वी नीड टू गिव टू द डिफरेंट प्लेयर्स एंड डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ पीपल हू आर वर्दी ऑफ इट एंड एवरी वन हैज टू वर्क इन कोलेबरेशन एंड देन स्टार्ट गिविंग द सोल्यूशन सो जस्ट वन एग्जाम्पल कुड बी अ पॉवरफुल ए आई कंपनी कैन वर्क विद अ पॉवरफुल मशीन कंपनी टू जस्ट टू बिल्ड एन एंड टू एंड सोल्यूशन एंड ऑफर इट टू द फार्मर रादर देन जस्ट ट्राइंग टू डू एवरीथिंग बाय ऑन युअर ओन बाय दिस रिमार्क आई विल स्टॉप माय डिस्कशन एंड हैंड ओवर टू द तरण so no, thank you so much vanand i think this is a very very good example uh you know we, we should all play by our strengths uh, and and solving the end mile the last mile problem uh, there's lot to be done in in consonance or in collaboration for example what he said is somebody should focus on data and somebody should focus on the machinery uh and sensors all of this could be you know uh, handled together in order to deliver the final solution the problem is all of us are doing the same thing again and again and this is where a full stack a central data pool a machinery company and an analysis company all come collaboratively to you know solve something so now let me uh, invite i would say one of the most illustrious uh, alumnus of this the of this uh, from this uh, from this uh, in place uh, an alumnus of pec chandigarh 35 years globally working with you know the best of the best uh, head of engineering at one of the best uh, uh, i would say information technology companies in the world uh, he has been a mentor he has been a board member to leading startups of the world including oyo and uh, mr vinod sood uh, here i would like to have a clapping for him please Mr Vinod Sood is a member of advisory committee committee of uh, Institute of Informatics and Communications University of Delhi he is also on the advisory board of some of the startups like uh, Oyo Rooms and most notably he is a uh, gold medalist from Pec Chandigarh uh, with 35 years of high perf- leading high performance engineering teams uh, at premier r&d organizations in India so i would uh, request sir you you would have heard about the various applications from of ai right from plant breeding to you know uh, research to uh, food uh, the new food and and um, aerial imagery would like to understand sir what's your view uh, you have been heading uh, great institutions r and d how do you see ai percolating uh, in various sectors and how do you see that agriculture will find its Uh, will find its mantra uh, through this technology and when do you see this blue revolution coming in <laughs> so thank you taranjit so i think uh, what i would like to uh, say is that as we all have seen the adoption of technology and specifically uh, digitalization is pretty much now uh, finding its way in all sectors all kinds of industries and i think uh, it is not too far when some of these technologies uh, start showing results as we start adopting these technologies uh, as far as the agricultural value chain is concerned and and what i mean by the agricultural value chain is right from farmers adopting and using these technologies as producers of uh, agricultural commodities uh, and the entire supply chain which uh, enables all the agriculture produce and commodities to reach the ultimate end consumer and when we talk about technologies there is a wide variety of technologies right from uh, iot intelligent sensors uh, drones advanced data analytics artificial intelligence and machine learning but as uh, some of our panelists also said and as uh, swanath uh, mentioned i think what what is going to be very important is that we should not be looking at technologies in isolation okay but what is going to be important is that how do we use 
some of these technologies and integrate all these technologies together to solve problems on the ground. So it's not looking to use technology in isolation, but what is going to be important is to pick up relevant problems and see how those technologies can be used to solve that problem, increase efficiency, bring in optimization, and eventually enable the end customer on both sides of the value chain, that is the consumer of the agricultural produce and on the other side, the producer, the farmer, they benefit. So I think that is what is going to be important. Yes. And, and, and do you think, sir, uh, this... All of these sensors, all of this IoT, all of these applications have been here for some time now. And it has found amazing applications in logistics. It has found amazing applications in healthcare. Uh, what do you think is the reason that a, a, I mean, these applications in agriculture has not been able to see that, that scale, uh, that light of the day? So I think w one of the critical things which we have to look at in India, and as, as we all know, 90% of our farmers, right, they are marginal farmers. Yes. Okay. So, whether they are able to use these technologies, okay, whether they can afford to use these technologies. Yes. Now, uh, nowadays, it's a very relevant topic and some of us coming from Delhi, okay, we are suffering uh, very high pollution levels, right? Indeed. Indeed. In, in, in Delhi and adjoining areas and, and there is a lot of talk about crop burning. Okay. Yes. And we also hear on the other side okay, that there are now technologies available okay, which the farmers can use okay, and without burning the stubble, right, yes. uh, which creates pollution, why are they not using the technologies? And a lot of us sitting in Delhi right, keep wondering, technologies are available, why are farmers not using it? But then... Let's also understand 90% of the farmers, can they afford to use some of those technologies? So I think as technologists and as industry, what now we have to take the next step is, the first step was uh, the R&D, okay? Yeah. Uh, in terms of coming out with uh, solutions to the problems using technology. I think the next stage is, using engineering to optimally or to bring down the price point of implementing these technologies and taking it to the end customers of these technologies who are marginal farmers in India. Yeah. So I think that is what the next challenge is going to be. And having said that, it's very heartening to see that a lot of startups, okay, uh, are coming up and these startups, the founders are youngsters uh, who are technologists, who are engineers uh, and who actually come from the grassroots as, as one of our uh, co-panelists comes, okay, who, who understand the real problem of the farmers and they are trying to figure out how to use these technologies, make them affordable, make them economical so that the farmers are able to adopted okay and i i also liked uh, what he said and what uh, mr vishal said okay in terms of one is the collaborative approach yes. as you yourself mentioned all these technologies have been around for years okay yeah. right but now i think uh, what we all need to do is collaborate right instead of trying to reinvent the wheel okay and if we if we continue doing that then then it is going to be almost impossible to bring down the price point of these technologies yes. and the mass adoption of the technologies. Yes. And second is sharing of knowledge. Okay? Yes. Yes. Uh, building these data banks, building these knowledge banks. Okay. Because again, if, if you see India, it's a very diverse country. Even a crop like wheat or sugarcane or paddy, right? In an area which is, uh, the way it is produced, cultivated the strains right 
in in uh, every 100 kilometers yeah. okay it changes okay so the data which you might have collected for one region okay might not be even relevant absolutely okay and in terms of usage of ai and ml yeah. building the models and training the models mm -hmm. right it it is going to be very important that we have relevant data across different regions of the country yes. so that is where these data banks sharing of the knowledge is going to be important so even though i don't understand agriculture much but hearing from my co panelists and based on my experience in terms of building technologies yes. okay which are affordable yeah. and for indian conditions okay yeah i think that is what is going to be critical absolutely so i think that's a that's an amazing insight as we said you know collaboration is the key and probably we can learn uh, you know how do we scale technology uh, in india the the best part about india is that a lot of these technologies are already there on the platter whether it is you know uh, digitization whether it is you know uh, the whole mobile telephony which was so expensive just 4 years back 5 years back i remember uh, our prime minister Five six years back, uh, telling very clearly that first bring down the cost of mobile phone, make it in India. That was brought down to very low prices. Uh, earlier it was usually done in China and brought here. Second, bring down. I mean, put high network, high speed mobile telephony, which was where the three G and the four G came. And then the third, reduce that price per person. We could. can't imagine that today at 50 rupees 100 rupees you are having access to the end mile when we started agri texer 6 years back it was it was laughable when we used to say that you know we'll create a solution for the farmer oh ji farmer kul kithe hunda mobile ji was the was the was the first laugh off was done by everyone and today you can see that literally the applications are so massive that we are just we are at the cusp of a revolution itself and and i think uh, i would like to uh, i would like to just highlight to few minutes from mr wong i would like to understand uh, you see uh, israel or you see netherlands these are countries which have used technology massively not just in their country but taken it to you know multiple countries globally israelis today are with their technology they are present in the whole of south america they are present in whole of africa uh wells they have a very small uh, you know uh, application in their country itself uh, if i talk there's a program sir by uh, israel called bird bilateral international research and development mm -hmm. so whatever research is done uh, in israel is taken to multiple countries using bilateral r&d and that helps them to scale massively thankfully india today is so large and i i i can tell you that what india has as a base uh, app, uh, system for applying technology that i i think no country has even if you go to us the kind of payment system that india has us is not able to match it up so this is where we say that you know that the india is ready but are we ready for that and uh, you know this is where uh, a lot of applications a lot of youngsters sitting here today you would be you would want to be an entrepreneur you would want to create solutions uh, you should be you should be happy that the time for india has come the only thing that is not available is how do i work how do i apply that that information gap can be filled if you understand agriculture and technology both unfortunately our agriculture graduates don't understand agri technology much and our technology guys do not understand how what is agriculture working on so my uh, this is this is what i told at iit khadakpur even to, in 2002 <laughs> that you know agriculture and technology needs to marry each other and it will only happen if you step up all of these agriculture graduates sitting here in the room uh, aspirants who want to build something for the nation you should step up for the technology to embrace and then apply uh, yeah. i mean and it is so easy today it is it is just about plugging and uh, do not fear that you know this is something that only a scientist from the moon can come and do it no nothing like that there are people available there are technology uh, there are platforms available all you need to do is identify what is it that needs to be done and applied and learn from countries like you know uh, netherlands and israel who have just developed very few applications but scaled it to the world i think india is at the cusp of that 
revolution where what we can what we create her in fact sir i would like to give a very good example here india created its first venture capital exit in agriculture sir just uh, three months back uh, uh, that that gentleman created a ai's sensor based solution which can uh, predict when the prawns need to be fed it's for the prawn industry sir for the fishing mm -hmm. industry uh for the five years he was in india he was not able to scale it uh, much he was not able to have that revenue mm -hmm. somebody he met at the airport he told him to you know move uh, that you know i want to apply it in south america he went to south america and he never came back i'm just joking but <laughs> i'm saying for the three years in south america he sold to literally every country at almost five to seven times the price of india he scaled that to uh, a significant level and he sold it to nutrico nutrico is one of the largest uh, feed companies in the world they took that technology and now they are they have increased their sales 4x times wherever they have applied his technology so it is very heartening that you know what he was trying to sell here in in rural belt of telangana and hyderabad found applications in you know peru and bolivia and argentina and and the large the world's largest feed company found that if i use this technology i can increase my sale 4x times so this is where you know what we need to understand that we have done a lot in selling software in the last 3 decades sir yeah but the next 3 decades is ai in agriculture and i think this is where it should be very heartening for all of us to believe in the mission that this is something that we all can undertake all you need to do is step up and undertake that uh you know uh, uh undertake that step to apply it in agriculture and believe me whatever you do here in india if you can do it in india you can do it in 100 countries so that's the power of ai that we can we can undertake so i would like to uh, you know understand from all of us uh, that you know there are applications of plethora but there is a gap we have not been able to embrace technology and i think that's where agriculture needs to marry technology which i believe is the right time in india in the last so many decades it's the only time in india where that everything is available on a platter on a platform you need to just sew it together to build that what i what i also understand that collaboration is a must without collaborations it it we we won't be able to scale and that's why what swanan said about you know that and what mr vinod said that uh, if we don't uh, what keep doing your machinery but integrate with a company which which does ai or which does a software just hardware probably might not be something and this is a call out to all the people from batinda and khanna and all that to you know talk about how i can integrate way various ai applications in my tractors or in my rotavators or whichever way it is possible today you can build the next generation uh, machinery for the world why should a canadian company should only be able to tell that you know uh, with data we can we can predict where to sow and what to do this can also be done from our from our own place all you need is to collaborate you don't have to develop everything on your own also uh, what mr vishal said doc professor vishal about you know central pool this is i think uh, uh, an amazing need and i would request all research institutions to come together whether it's iit rop i am not sure whether iit ropod is aligning uh, with pau yes. <laughs> now we are having close aligning i think we should put a clap for that <laughs> this is the need uh, you know the iit should lies with iims the iim should lies with triple iits the triple iits would should lies with uh, indian statistical institute that's the need of the country today and uh, 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 just sitting at some you know uh, icr institute you cannot do the hardware and the software and the ai all together there are experts sitting and all they need to collaborate is to find one problem and that's where the i believe the the entrepreneurs come in they should come and 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 help in integrating this this story and uh, i would like to say sir uh, uh, pratik ji uh, as you said you know we need to summarize uh, i have summarized four five points but the most important point is india is ready for blue revolution i think there is no better ain't no better time than today 
uh, where we have the platforms, we have the skill, and, and we have much better skill sets than any country, uh, including China. We have a better skill set of AI, better skill set of software. All we need is agriculture to step up and embrace this technology and take it to the next level. We are ready for blue revolution, and I think uh, this is what is the is the summary that I would like to provide, sir. We just need to educate and motivate our youngsters to step up. You can see all of all of. I, I'm not a youngster, sir. So as you said about startups, uh, probably I'm a very oldie. <laughs> but I would like to say that you know a lot of youngsters are ready. Uh, you just need to come together to collaborate and build world-class solutions of AI in agriculture from India. So, Pratik ji, on to you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I think uh, you summed, up, summed it up quite well, uh, Taranjit. Uh, and you're absolutely right, you know, that uh, the time is now. We have the whole ecosystem coming together. And uh, so we've had a, so we have a Q&A now, yeah? Yes, I, I would request uh, uh, audience to, uh, you know, you utilize the time and, and please ask questions uh, from the eminent panelists. Yeah. So do we have yeah, a mic? Yeah, then the All mic. Right. So you can uh, uh, please ask your question and also the panelist you're directing it at. Uh, thank well, you. Uh, First of all, I wish to thank CIF for organizing such a wonderful session. And uh, it is a good in interaction between the end users and the technology person. Uh, practically, when we talk about the artificial intelligence and uh, the other technologies, I believe the remote sensing and GIS is the key platform which has been used for the many years since now that uh, for the agriculture purpose and when the agriculture is there then the water is also uh, both are interdependent and vis-a-vis -vis both are interdependent fields where we have to focus on to this coming up to the mr vishal's uh, um, point that how to use the data is it be is it uh, accessible to the end user I believe here the education and the awareness programs are to be uh, put up in the in the region because in the every state we have state remote sensing agencies who are producing such a wonderful data based upon the artificial intelligence and the crop acreage production estimation uh, things and uh, pertaining to that data every district have one uh, training center with the soil and water conservation departments where any farmer can approach and have the assessment of their fields like uh, soil health monitoring cards and everything these are based upon these artificial intelligence technologies here i wish to uh, yeah, yes. Here I wish to conclude that the artificial intelligence, when we talk about we, we are creating a hype that artificial intelligence is such a thing which is beyond the capacities of a small farmer. It is not in a right away when the Google Earth and the Bhuvan by the NRSA and everything is, is on the uh, free platforms. Only thing is the information which we have to transmit. May I request to please formulate the question? Yes. Yeah. So, it is not the question, it is just a putting a word uh, up that the education and the awareness program should be put up by the government to uh, bridge the gap between the information which is available with the yes. state agencies and to the end user which are the farmers which can uh, uh, easily assess this data. Sir. I, okay. I, I thank you all for that. Yes. Thank you. This is a very good point, sir. And I think a lot of, uh, including IIT Ropada, IIT Mandi, uh, PAU, they are all setting up, uh, because this is a need. As, as we said, agriculture needs to marry technology. I think this is a need where all the youngsters are, are trained about, you know, what to apply. So, uh, Mr. Vishal, uh, you would I like, would like to, to answer? I would like to say that uh, 
there is a need to develop the ecosystem yes it is not uh, we can say everybody can do everything somebody is to generate information somebody is to let people uh, allow to generate information let us say farmers field there should be agencies there should be well recognized bodies those who can generate information then there is an agency who is to process that information then come up with the prescriptions otherwise what will happen each and everybody is doing everything then there is no absolutely you mentioned that knowledge is everywhere so we need to connect the knowledge islands you are doing super duper work they are doing excellent contribution towards their own mandate but ultimately yes we are to connect these uh, on knowledge islands to build a network of we can say knowledge base so let us train each and everybody let us dedicate Uh, let us authorize uh, bodies to uh, build that ecosystem the part of ecosystem which we can build. and I, i i think some somebody here talked about that there is uh, ongoing work on the yes. ai stack yeah right yes. I, and i i think yeah, yeah. the that, agri stack and the government yeah. is going to release no, so, so the, i think that, that a, will become a platform which will integrate right. all these elements yes. right and there will be one single platform which all the users mm. can access so i think in fact uh, uh, not just the agri stack sir if you if if we consider about uh, you know uh, this e-commerce platform that is also coming in i mean the way the government is integrating now a lot of information into one single pool is 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 very laudable and uh, ondc this is called uh, you you might see then there is a logistics that is coming on uli is so all of this technologies can now be utilized to build a better interface for farmers uh, which is the last mile and i think the next innovation is about going to tier 2 tier 3 and the rural sector and this is where the government uh, we all cannot create that platform uh, even as a single entity and that's where the government's uh, you know efforts to do that is very very laudable and i think uh, all the all the people who are wanting to build ai solutions in agriculture should leverage that in order to accelerate their apl- application any other question please uh, i think uh, at this side here yes yeah. yes sir yeah so i think these are wonderful dots which need to be connected so uh, one is generation of technology ji mm-hmm. one is dissemination of that information yes. and third especially when i said some low cost technologies to execute those yes ideas so better said it right that there has to be an agency which gets things uh, perfectly on the scale and i don't i think the universities can't be bypassed in that system they are the disseminators of that in- information you have the all india radio which made a green revolution possible because it was broadcasting that information to the farmers now it's apps so they can develop wonderful apps talk, talk with the companies but universities cannot bypass their role that is one number two is iits begs they need to uh, develop the technologies which execute on those plans as uh, uh, mr G- gunhart has said that the technology is economical third i have a point for wonk wonk that corporate agriculture is a isolated pockets in india it's netherlands and india two different places you have small population you produce food for the world we produce food for ourselves a very large population so the technology is not in mass technology which is expensive everybody said that is it has to be within the reach right so the high corporate like uh, uh, sugar cane industry or grapes or fruits horticulture there your technologies would be wonderful but in general uh, vishal's point is well taken it is the universities which have to be strengthened to disseminate the information number one iits pecs have to develop the technologies which are economical and farmers need to be updated with those technologies so that we have a sustainable agriculture till the time we reach a stage where people move from agriculture to the uh, secondary and tertiary structures thank you very much great point i think uh, universities cannot be bypass sir. they have always been the nodal point to outreach and uh, the effort of and the work of pau speaks for itself and i think it's just uh the the times for more strengthening and more outreach uh, is what we are what we are prescribing yeah uh hello uh yes please yeah
sitting here to listen to my colleague Veer. So I thought, but it's a amazing things. First to Shivananji, is Dubuki still continuing? Is Dubuki still continuing? Yeah, it's still continuing. Okay. Uh, what is the percentage? So I may not be able because to... Because I'm do. also a farmer's family. I used to listen to that from my grandfather saying that that's what, coming from Maharashtra again. Yeah, just I would like to know that. Yeah, it's still continuing some part, but there is a lot of awareness now. Now, yeah, at least in Maharashtra, a lot of farmers, sugarcane farmers are moving to the drip irrigation. Okay. And uh, to Chandanaji, you said that uh, plant-based protein, we are the world number one in the milk. Don't you think that it is better to concentrate on what we already have than what we don't have? So already have milk? Is, we already have a milk, which we are the surplus milk producer. That is the best protein available for being a vegetarian. That is the best protein available to me. That money, what is being done with the non-profit organization, that can be invested on the animal health, right? So maybe yeah. that can be more beneficial than going for the renovating all the things, bring back the wheel, which we have done 5,000 years before. Is it? Ignorant. My father said, a fool can ask the very beautiful question, but an intelligent person cannot answer it. Now I'm on the fool side. That's why I'm asking. That. Yeah, so I, uh, I see, I, I completely agree with your point uh, in the sense that we have already identified a great protein source uh, from dairies. Uh, however, the scale up of industrial agriculture has, has gone off the charts such that the, the, we are depleting our natural resources. Um, to, a, to an extent where it might be irreversible damage. So we are trying to offset that damage by trying to find alternatives where we can still not make a sacrifice of not having that great protein source from milk, uh, not, not having to make that sacrifice, and at the same time trying to not lose biodiversity by having dairy farms all over the planet to supply the 2050 population of 10 billion. So that is the fine balance we're trying to sac sac you know, yeah, find. It's clear. And it's balancing. That's what, the beginning of the balancing, that's what you're planning. Yes. So I'll, yeah. I, I would like to yeah. uh, just comment. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, what you're saying is true. But then let's also keep in mind that changing food habits okay, is almost an impossible problem to solve, okay? Now we all have four meals in a day, right? Breakfast, lunch, then evening snack and, and the dinner, right? And what you're saying is that why can't we use all our protein needs through milk-based sources, right? Now when you want to have a dal and a sabji and a roti, right? You cannot only have a milk. and and so that is where I think uh, plant-based proteins have their own, own need, okay? So let's also keep that in mind that even though from, from, from a very top level, what you are saying makes sense that we have so much of excess milk and uh, milk is a good source of protein. So why can't we just have milk and milk-based uh, foods to take care of our protein needs? But that also means changing the food habits of uh, such a big population, which is impossible, right? May I, supplement, uh, may I supplement these points? In fact, when we learn about, you know, milk production in India, we definitely feel proud about it. But it's still in terms of milk consumption, because if you look at the per capita, you know, milk production, uh, we are still uh, at the rank of 99. Uh, in Absolutely. Globally. You, so, uh, so this is one point. And um, I also would like to say with you that um, definitely there can be a lot of things done, but plant-based, of course, whatever we eat, uh, a lot of it is plant-based. So going for uh, plant-based protein is, is, a, is a good idea. We should try it for alternative foods. And one thing I would like to also add that food habits are definitely changing. Uh, food habits have changed a lot since we started eating. I mean, I as a, as a human started eating, my food habits have changed and therefore food habits of everybody change. For example, soya today, 
uh, is found much more uh, in 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 all diet preferences or uh, milk products so milk product is not only just milk but there are hundreds of milk pro possible products so i would like to supplement your question and also the answer i think we have to work in in all the dimensions to feed such a huge population so food based proteins are uh, also a good thing to to do at this stage and another question to you uh, yeah um i eat your cherry tomatoes so we do require that kind of technology but we would like to because as we as a technological provide but we are in the hardware you are in the software so i would like to see how you see the implementation over here along with the eminent panels like dr vishal bakter ji was telling that how do you see as a dutch company implementing that in india in your perspective this is my last question thank you so like you just uh, the gentleman just uh, said the De the netherlands is a totally different country than than india yeah, but um in in terms of diversity in terms of geographically uh, that diverse uh, diversity um so we cannot compare the netherlands with with india in in the netherlands uh, what we see for food production is that everything has been automated uh, automated um um greenhouses have become some sort of plant factories with fixed inputs and fixed outputs everything is concerned about optimizing plant growth in order to uh, produce the most to having the most production with the least inputs in order to answer your question india still has a, a bridge to get eh? and what we try to do is not um try to get the level from um um from 0 to 100 in uh, in a flash no we try to help growers step by step to increase their knowledge with regard to uh, plant and crop cultivation so and this is uh, uh, also what i said earlier uh, knowledge transfer is is something which is very very important to let um Indian growers understand what crop cultivation is about and what uh, entrepreneurship is about. Uh, so uh, we have to let people understand what it is to be an entrepreneur and and to understand data. What um, so so the help that we offer to to Indian growers is not only to provide tech but also to understand the data to let them understand what is needed for a plant to grow optimally so doing so uh, bridges the gap between 0 to 100 and maybe we first go to 10 and after that to 20 and doing step by step we help growers to uh, understand what it is to run a farm in which uh, a crop can be cultivated optimally Hello uh, my name is Vishwendra uh, and I come from a mountainous state called Himachal Pradesh uh, I reckon currently we are talking about farms that are huge in size and are uh, in in the plain areas but my question is people from the mountains areas uh, where land is in scarcity uh, water is in scarcity how ai can help uh, those farmers uh, optimize their production uh as you spoke about the yeah. uh, uh greenhouses and stuff people what i've seen uh people tend to use greenhouses just for a season or so and they still can get the output uh that they have put in so what uh, i also come from a farmer's family and my brothers do the farming what they say is the 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 monetary input is so high and the uh, the income is very less so people are discouraged about uh, all the uh, greenhouses and all the latest uh, gmo technologies and stuff so i really wanted an insight how ai and machinery what the panelists have spoke about can help uh, make people aware uh, and you know uh, to use technology in their farming because uh, currently i see people are not uh, really trusting the the uh, tech and they are moving to the their old uh, 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 methods as i would say there is no one single template to apply everything everywhere uh, 
it has to be extremely customized. When we talk about AI today being for large scale, uh, it's it's not like that. If you see the example that I gave, it scaled from India to you know so many countries. It was never meant for large scale. It was meant for smallholders. It was just the adoption which took time, which was proven in other countries than India. And now India is again coming back. I mean, so started from India, but coming back to India. So the question is not about, you know, whether we have the technology or not. The, the question is whether we have the understanding or not. There's a company called Semios uh, in Canada, which, uh, you know, started with simple thing about, you know, relaying the pest infusion or the pest uh, occurrence. And then based on that alerting, which is very difficult in mountainous regions. They also started in mountainous regions itself, especially with wineries and apples and, you know, and uh, they have been able to scale the technology in Canada and multiple countries. So uh, how do you usage? The whole thing is that if I do that same thing in Canada to India, I mean, we will be able to do it at one fifth the cost. It's just because are there is there's so much of technology platforms in india which can utilize it but whether we are using it or not is the question here so i'm not as i'm saying uh, the point here is not about do we what do we have the question is what is the problem we have rather than asking that what is the solution we have can we just put the problem first that you know this is the problem we are facing in the mountains what are the various tech that can come in so there's no point in challenging whether you know you are developing for the larger we, it can be developed for anything it is about understanding first what is the problem and how do we apply that so this is my take on that yeah. there's there's there are there are massive solutions available and the, to make it economical as as the gentleman said right it is possible in india but then this is the opportunity so, Karan, may I add something? Yes, sir, please, sir. Uh, like he has asked about the hill agriculture. So, what I perceive as a hill agriculture, hills are the areas wherever we are, in wherever country we are. They are, we can say, the center of pure environment, water, soil. And if these regions are facing some problem, like we have seen in Apple in this year, in Kashmir and all other hills, if uh, uh, during this uh, session one day back, uh, I was surprised to know that the chemical spray in hilly areas is increasing. Yeah. Why so? Otherwise, being in cities, metro cities, we believe that the Gobi Jo Himachal se aari hai, wo bahut achhi hai. This was our belief, my belief, two days back. But I was surprised to know that in hills, the sprays are increasing. Yes. So this is the need of AI. Yeah. We need to uh, strengthen these farmers. Please don't do it whether it is required or not right now. Otherwise, after two years, they will be addicted to that. So this is the real, uh, this is the need of now AI that with the help of AI, we should stop this region hill agriculture. Uh, very, uh, we can say well in advance. We have a great solution for spraying in with AI. Uh, we'll, we'll come to that. Maybe we can catch up and we can talk. So, so I just want to add one more point to the problem which was asked. So it was not, it is not only about hilly areas. It's like across the India. So if we consider the pulp, uh, field size and plot size, some of the solutions, if we just talk about a poor farmer basis, they may not be a feasible. Like some of the advanced machineries or kind of <coughs> analytics tool available, individual farmer may not be uh, uh, may not be able to afford it. So there are two ways to look at ki how we first uh, analyze the problem, synthesize it, and what kind of a solutions we are building. Yeah. And the second important part is what kind of a business model as an industry we are preparing to reach out to the farmers. Great. So it need not to be only a capex oriented models like whether we expect farmer to buy everything and then uh, wait for its amortization or whether it's become profitable or not. It's a role of industry to make a, such a business models where like it's a subscription basis model or it could be a simple uh, rental model where they can rent some machinery for a season or something or enable a group of farmers. Yeah. So this is the biggest challenge in India to make a, uh, any solutions affordable. When I said three A's, so the third A is very difficult when we say affordable and it's where industry will play its role yeah. and people have to put their mind and brain together to make them affordable, building innovative business models. And 
when i say innovative business model very important role would be played by local entrepreneurs or the local people progressive people who are willing to adopt technology at some level and they will be as a act as an execution partner or they will play that anchor role uh, uh, for transmitting that technology till uh, till the last mile thank you sunan i think uh, it's time for us to conclude uh, our session i would like uh, mr pratik gar to please uh, give the concluding remarks and vote of thanks from mr vinod sudh yeah. yeah sure yeah why not at the same time our government agencies monitor all these farmers and approach them properly what was wrong and how to handle it uh, yeah i think this is uh, the topic here sir why not we won't be able to answer we are here to talk about ai technologies in agriculture uh, why himachal politics is not allowing somebody farmer to respond by the government i think we are off that remark we, we don't know the process it is a issue but that it's not part of our our, our topic here sir so thank you so much uh, i think it has been a great uh, so please uh, mr pratik i would like you to take it i want to make uh, one last statement before and i requested sir to <clears throat> permit me on this in fact uh, there has been one point that has been touched is the agriculture residue management or the stubble management or stubble burning i think it is not uh, a good idea or it is not a good idea to continue talking that this is this entire pollution is coming because of the farmers uh, the understanding that we have grown on the basis of technical analysis and the scientific analysis that aqi uh, the air quality index in a, our kitchens is worse than the stubble burning site so uh, the other thing that i want to tell you is that i have a diesel car i had a diesel car and the knocking of a diesel car is seven times more than a petrol car i don't have it any more so um, my request to all of you uh, and that's why i requested sir that please allow me to make the last statement that please do not carry this message at all that these are the farmers who are creating the entire pollution in fact we are creating the pollution um, the industry and uh, thank you so thank you pushpendra uh, i think you about about to open another pandora's box on the kitchen side uh, so you know thankfully we don't have too many uh, women in the in the panel in the no women in the panel and of course not many in the audience but uh, so i think we had a great uh, we had a great conference uh, i very honestly uh, enjoyed every bit of it I, and personally i am taking back uh, a lot to learn uh, and before i came here i perhaps felt that we are in the tech industry are the only ones who are innovating but uh, the phenomenal amount of work that's happening in in the agri space is so heartening to see uh, I, it's been a phenomenal two hours spent though i you know uh, as i said early on uh, we came from both vinod and i came from delhi for this uh, but i think it was worth it uh, we had a great panel uh, from uh, agri experts to uh, educationalists you know and uh, researchers uh, uh i think this quite a bit of uh, resonance on what needs to be done and uh, and i think one of the key message that i'm taking from here is that um, one technology has to be technology has become affordable and it's all available and as uh, taranjit said uh, we have to stitch it all together and perhaps with the agri stack coming together availability and uh, that reachability to the last man standing And, and since the farming community uh, by and large is marginal as as we know said uh, will become perhaps a game changer and india is at an inflection point as far as 
transformation, transforming the, the agri sector is concerned. So, all the very best to all of you and I hope you, you enjoyed today and uh, have uh, uh, enough take backs for you to go back and work on. Uh, and I'd, I'd like to request my uh, colleague Vinod uh, to make his concluding remarks, please. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Pratik. So, uh, first of all, I would like to uh, compliment CII for choosing a very relevant and topical subject in terms of uh, uh, use cases of AI in agriculture. I think very, very timely. And what I, I would uh, recommend is that some of the uh, comments which were made by the audience, I think uh, those are some of the action items in terms of uh, what CI can take to the state governments and the central governments in terms of some pol policy uh, policy initiatives. Uh, and I would like to thank all my uh, fellow panelists uh, for uh, doing justice to the topic. And uh, we look forward to many more such uh, interactions uh, where the technologists, engineers, and the farming and the agriculture community can come together uh, through uh, platforms uh, like CII and we can see how technology can be uh, not just adopted but can be taken to the grassroots and can be made scalable uh, so that the real benefits of uh, these technologies uh, can be seen. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So, with this, we would like to, Dr. Vishal, you wanted to say something? Uh, it's not. The chairperson has already concluded. I am sorry. So, uh, Taran has said that if you want to say something, I would like to not to conclude, not sum up, but just to convey that we need to set standards. I have written right now after discussing all these uh, panelists. Uh, set, we need to set standards, build protocols, develop quality uh, and scalable algorithms decision support systems and prescription for sustainable agriculture through networking of knowledge islands and using data analytics and AI. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. I would like to thank all panelists and eminent uh, guests uh, and we would like to conclude this session. Thank you CII yeah. for conducting this very important session and thank you everyone for being here. <laughs>